Good afternoon. In this video, I want to deal with some issues uh, dealing with a sound mind and uh, the dangers of a Christian getting involved in things that he shouldn't get involved in. Before I do that, I'd like to read from a, it's a book of Angel Force. And um, here's an individual who's about to go in combat for the first time. And uh, he's talking here to uh, he's talking to his uh, commander here, Darby. Uh, who was the head of the Rangers. A sharp fight ensued. Uh, Darby joined in the attack on the schoolhouse, going, going up against automatic weapons fire. He was accom accompanied by his bodyguard, Charles Riley, who was carrying a submachine gun, and his driver, Carlo Contria, who began to quiver. Uh, what are you shaking for, Darby asked. Are you scared? No, sir, Contria responded. I'm just shaking with patriotism. That's a generation you can't beat. <laughs> You're not going to beat those guys. So, I want to start off here. This is a lot of, when you see on YouTube, you see a lot of people getting involved in things uh, that uh, Christians should very superficially know. And the issue is, you look at this, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, too many Christians are out there that are afraid this is going to happen, that's going to happen, and uh, it's a spirit of fear. But of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. A sound mind. Unfortunately, t today, too many people, Christians, are walking around with the mind, they're not, they don't have a sound mind. They're off balance. And uh, Ephesians 5.11 tells us, Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove, reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in, dark, in secret. Too much attention being paid to things being done in darkness by Christians. Too much attention. And that's where you get all these nuts running around. The Jesuits and the, the Masons and uh, the uh, conspiracy guys. Oh, everyone's running around, you know, and they're attacking me and I'm the, consp I'm the target of conspiracy, uh, you know, this, that, and the other thing. They're unbalanced. Christians also have a sound mind. Just not have any fear, but have power of love, love, and a sound mind. That's how you can tell when a, a Christian is truly in fellowship. He's going to have those attributes. He's not going to be involved in the dark things, spending his time running into. Oh, you know, the Jesuits are doing this and the Jesuits are doing that. You know, about the Masons. He said, it's not wrong understanding what they stand for and what they've done. But you can't get too deep in that stuff because it, 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 it drives you crazy. Witchcraft. It becomes, you become absorbed in it. And it takes over your life. If you look at, uh, Philippians, Philippians 4, and the idea of, uh, idea of peace, peace in your life, the peace that passes, passes all understanding. Yeah, uh, 4, 7, and the peace of, I'll say here, yeah, let your moderation be known unto all men. Your moderation, your moderate. You're balanced. You're not crazy. <laughs> you 
too many crazy people walking around who call themselves Christians. And once it, once you determine that they're crazy, you have to let them go, cut them loose. And see how they turn, see how they turn on you. They become vicious. See, they, 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 they can't understand it. They can't, uh, they can't deal with anything. Everything, everything is taken personally. You see Jack Smack 77, his laconic answer to those who attack him personally. Well, no one's attacking Jack Smack 77 personally. He has personal, laconic, you know, a concise answer. He's just going to put up a thing. No, we're, talk, we're attacking Jack Smack 77's false gospel. Everything you do with these guys, they take it personal. Robert Baker takes it personally. You attack my ministry. Uh, Brian Denny, take it personally. Jim Kim, Gene King, you take it personally. Every, everything that you do with them, they can't take, they take an adoptional issue. They take it personally. That's a sign of a guy who's unbalanced. They can't deal with the point that they, you know, no, this is not personal. This is a doctrinal issue. So Jack Smack would say, that, you know, I was talking with you, a person. See, he can't separate the two. Robert Blake, he can't separate the two. Why are you trying to attack my ministry? Eh? Because of teaching heresy. And he'll go, on, he'll go on a video that shows you can't take them, that, that God isn't concerned about you cutting off your hand and not even admit he's wrong. Not even admit it's wrong. They never admit they're wrong. They can't do it. Because the whole system, the whole system is, is based on this infallibility that they think they have. They think, they think they are the King James Bible. That's why they call themselves the real Bible believers. They think they are the King James Bible. And that's what Robert Baker will say. Well, I'm just reading what it says in James 2.22. 224. I'm just reading what it says. They're unbalanced. There's no moderation there. Be careful for, uh, for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made, made known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth, passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Christians should be peaceful. And at calm. Because he's, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And that means you're going to be you're going to have a, a moderate temper. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, notice they start with truth. God always starts with truth. When these guys talk and argue and say, well, what, you know, what are you picking on me? What you? It always starts with truth. Jesus Christ came with a sword to divide. And it starts with truth. You cannot have fellowship with someone who does not love the truth. It's as simple as that. It's not personal. It's not personal. But the Holy Spirit didn't put the word truth first for no reason at all. You can't have fellowship with people who will accept a lie and just brush it off. There's something wrong with them. I'm not talking about errors. Because the, the errors are being explained to them. Their errors are being explained to them and shown. But they... They double down. They refuse to admit that they could be in error. So the truth becomes the guiding issue of fellowship. You can't have fellowship with people who do not love the truth. And you know if they have love of truth because they won't they won't change, they won't repent of their deceptions and their resting of scriptures 
and their private interpretations. Whatsoever things are honest, honesty. These guys are never honest. You can't have fellowship with someone who's not an honest person. When you see Robert Blake defend what he tries to defend, it's not honest. If a man will lie to you, how are you going to fellowship with the guy? Resting the scriptures is dishonest. You're deceiving yourself if you think that you can get, you can be with somebody, have fellowship with somebody who doesn't love the truth and who's not honest. And when a teacher is dishonest, like all these faith work people, like the crossless gospel people, like the all the people who want to teach a work system, conditional salvation, uh, eternal security, conditional eternal security. All the people are teaching false doctrine. Attack the King James Bible. James White. It's dishonest. He, he's caught time and time again lying about what, what Whipping has said. These guys are caught time and time again caught lying. 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 Misquoting. Misstating. And their followers don't care. They're not honest. They don't love the truth, and they they don't they're not honest. Whatsoever things are just, just fair. You look at these things, and you look at to say this justice should be an aspect of the criteria because it's God's criteria. God is just. God is holy. The Christian should be just and balanced in his evaluation of other believers. Instead, what you've got is a lot of people will not look at the facts, but will look at whose side everybody's on and attack the other guy just because he's not on the right side. A person who's just is going to look at it, look at it and say, wait a second, that's not what the guy said. When they take little things, snippets from your videos, and even though you might agree with this other guy most of the time, you say, "Wait a second, no, I'm gonna stop. No, you're not being fair. You're not being just to that individual. Justice goes with honesty. You have to be just. You have to recognize the truth comes first, with honesty, and then justice. It's a criteria." And when you see people who just don't care about justice, do not care about making the right decision, about defending someone who's unjustly being attacked, who didn't say such and such a thing, or didn't do such and such a thing, just because you don't like them, you're not being just. Whatsoever things are pure, Pure. This is against the uh, the King James Bible. There's only one thing that's pure. The the, uh, the written word of God is the King James Bible. But people who attack the King James Bible don't care if they have impurity in their Bibles. They don't care if they have impurity in their Bibles. You show them the errors. You know what they come back on you? Easter. Easter. <laughs> but Easter. Pure. People who don't love purity don't love God. And so where do you find a pure Bible? A pure Bible without any defects. And the people who attack the King James Bible are unconcerned about purity. They aren't concerned about purity. They want they want uh, readability. And they'll say, well, yeah, there's some errors in my Bible, but who cares? 
least I can at least he I can understand it. No, you want a pure Bible. You want a Bible that you can open up and know there's no errors in it. No deception. But they don't want that. It's about getting a Bible that they like. Not a pure Bible, but a Bible, a Bible that is convenient for them. And then running around looking for excuses and trying to find errors in the King James Bible. Oh, there can't be such a thing as a pure Bible. And yet they'll come up with these obscure, ridiculous arguments. Well, look, look, at, look at this, and look at that. The, this, the, the King James Bible isn't pure either. Look at this. Because they hate the idea that it could be a pure Bible, and they're rejecting it. But a person who loves purity is not going to get involved in filth. He's not going to get involved in the things that the world is putting out. The lies, the deception, the evil that the world is being put out. Because he loves purity. Whatsoever things are lovely. Beauty is not in the eye of the beholder people. I hate to break that truth to you. Beauty is an objective fact. Man has a normal, an actual thing where he looks at beauty and he sees a certain uh, symmetry. Colors. Mathematical balance. And he sees beauty there. He was created to see beauty. God created beauty. Look at you look at the planets. Look at the earth, think how beautiful it is. You can cover the sky. You cover the blue, how soft it is. The clouds in the background. You look at the creation of the temple, how beautiful it was. Everything God does is associated with beauty. That's why you can't when you see things that come out. To subjective things, well, it's beautiful, you know, the whole modern art, modern music, the screeching, the, you know, the, the uh, ugliness. It's, beauty isn't subjective. It's never meant subject, it's subjective. Be subjective. And so, the, what the world system wants you to do is bring you, suck you into that idea. And so you look at you know modern art, and you look at the the ugliness there, and you're supposed to well, you know, accept that modern uh, you know sculptures. And, you know, well, it's subjective. No, beauty is never subjective. It's always objective. Just because you might not see it doesn't mean it's not objective. It's there. It's there. And it's built built on objective standards. And that's one of the also proofs of the King James Bible. It's a beautiful Bible. It reads like a beautiful Bible. It sounds like a beautiful Bible. It doesn't have the screeching tones of a modern Bible. But God is God of creative beauty. You read the accounts of what heaven's going to look like. It's unimaginable. The uh, Solomon's kingdom he took uh, Queen Sol uh, Queen uh, uh, Sheba some breath away. The world deals in ugliness. It tries to bring everything into destruction. Tries to destroy. And this, of course, is the satanic system. It tries to destroy beauty and purity. But the Christian is supposed to seek these things out and have an objective standard, if you want to sound mind.
if you have a sound mind, this is the things you're going to look for and have uh, respect and appreciation for. What's over things over good report? We don't go out and listen for evil reports. We want to hear the good about people, to be uplifted, to celebrate other people's victories, other people's successes. Many of these people on YouTube, all they want to do is look around for people who have problems and celebrate their failures, their falls. Now the Christians wants things who wants to hear things of good report. Because he wants to celebrate and appreciate with that person the blessings that God has given him and the victories. Too many people out there, what are they doing? They just waiting to hear some disaster to happen to somebody that they don't like. And then, see, God got that guy. <laughs> if there be any virtue, virtue. What are you looking for virtue? Virtue is that yeah, aspect of truth and honesty and purity going together. So that's what we look for, virtue. The Christian should be seeking virtue. That should be his goal. That should be what he's seeking. That will keep you that will keep you away from sin. Sin is the opposite of virtue. Virtue is clean. Virtue is holiness. It's truth. It's pure. The world hates virtue. It mocks virtue. Look at the issue of uh, modesty in women. The world hates that. The world hates modesty. We're not supposed to be modest anymore. Attack femininity. They attack masculinity, the virtue of masculinity. What men are supposed to be. They try to turn everything on its head. But the idea of seeking what God says about these subjects and understanding those concepts and appreciating those concepts going against what the world says about them and that's the only thing that's going to be a sound mind it's the only thing that's going to give you a sound mind is thinking the way God thinks loving virtue and if there be any praise if there it be any praise, look for things to celebrate. Praise God. Be thankful for. But be ye thankful. Are you thankful? Are you thankful every day for what you've got? People who have unsound mind are never thankful. You see the whole world system set up here and the you know these people out there in Tifa and these people who are, you know, crying and burning things down and screeching and hollering and they come from these colleges and they do this, they're not thankful. They're not thankful for anything. They never will be. People are always looking for an excuse. Always looking for an excuse. Be angry. They can never find peace. They can never be thankful for what they have. Think on these things. Think on these things. 
the world is going to get you try to stop you to think on those things. The entire world system is set up to tell you, oh, don't think about, it. don't think about truth. The whole fake news media is telling, don't worry about truth. Just believe what we tell you. Just tell you, what we, you know, believe what we tell you. They hate the idea whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. All those attributes, all those qualities, the world hates. Whatsoever things are lovely. Do you see that stuff at the Grammys? That disgusting display they had in the Grammys? Beastal, beastal stuff going on? That's what the world wants you to believe. Buy into their music, buy into their art, buy into their thinking. It's all thinking. What's ever things who have a good report? They don't hear about a good report. You know, the news media has been done the less, less any at least reporting on any good news about COVID from any other news network in the world. They don't know any good news about COVID. They don't tell you, you know, what's going down, and deaths are going down. No, 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 no. It's all bad news. It's all bad news. They don't know about virtue. Can't be a virtue. Virtue is an absolute. You can't have absolutes. An absolute standard. Everything has to be subjective. Attack the virtue. Attack honesty. Attack truth. Attack loveliness. Attack, attack the pure. Everything about the, the world system is about filth. You see homeless people, how they're living. They don't care. They don't, sound, they don't have a sound mind. Those things which ye have both learned and received. Paul is teaching people. And heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. It's the only way you can have peace, people. Don't get sucked into the world system. And the only place you're going to find, find that is in the King James Bible. You won't find it in the modern versions because the modern versions aren't pure. The modern versions aren't honest. The modern versions have lies in them, historical errors, contradictions. So you have a pure Bible. God has given you a pure Bible to have a pure mind. But it's very easy, the world system out there, constantly bombarding you with these attacks on your mind to get sucked into something and to be brought down into some you know, into a negativity and to lose your concept of a sound mind. Being at peace. We have peace. We don't depend on outside surroundings to have peace. Our peace comes from within. Because of what we're thinking. So whenever you have questions and, and, and problems about having a sound mind, you go to that passage here in, uh, in Philippians 4. Philippians is about a book of happiness, rejoicing. Don't get caught up in the world system where they're constantly lying to you and showing you everything. What's, what are the news shows about? Negative? Everything's negative. I can't show you anything positive. <laughs> you know, I can't show you anything negative. And of course, they're going to lie to you. They're going to lie to you what's going on and who did what to who. And 
now they, if someone puts out the truth, now they cancel. Well, we can't let that person say that. That's too much truth. So this is just a short little video. I want to put, an, uh, put this out to exhortation and encouragement to people. A Christian is supposed to have a sound mind. When you see Christians who do not have a sound mind, it's because something in, in these areas here they've they've rejected. They rejected the truth. They rejected the honesty. They rejected the. Uh, justice they become liars the Gene Kim book we are lie what James Knox is saying yeah he lied you know defend Buckman system he'll lie what uh, 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 James Knox said now you wouldn't know that because you need, people aren't reading James Knox on his book on the law so you don't check what James Knox actually said But Gene Kim is a liar. In order to defend his faith works lie, he has no qualms about lying about what James Knox said in his defense of the faith alone system through every dispensation. They have no qualms. What they hope is that you don't check the footnotes, you don't check these, these other books that they're citing, so they're misquote guys. And James White does it all the time. And of course, things that are lovely. These guys are bringing in all these weird stuff. Bizarre stuff. Bizarre. One of the things with Ruckman's paintings, he was bizarre. Dark. Dark. He was always painting. You know, he thought that was realism. He loved talking about, you know, people you know, being blown up and murdered and killed. And, you know, he, that's realistic, you know. It's all darkness. His own mind was set into the darkness. Mm -hmm. And you saw how unbalanced he was. So this is how you this is how you evaluate people in your in your fellowship of people. And so we just had this cold blow up of this guy, Mike. And you can see there's something unbalanced about the guy. Now, hopefully, he repents. He's a young man. Hopefully, he repents, gets right with the Lord, opens his eyes to his idiocy about the government's coming after him. The government's coming after everybody. <laughs> I got news for you, Mike. Comes coming after everybody. You know. Gene came talking about cutting off your forehead. And Robert Baker talking about cutting off your right hand. And finding a date of the rapture in the Bible. Being adamant about that. Well, no, it says you can find the date here. And I'm going to just play with that. And we're going to get this. And it's not, it's not honest. You understand that, people? That's being dishonest. Oh, Ed, he never told you he's setting a date. He's, telling, he's giving you the false illusion that you could find the date. The time's in the Father's hands. He told that to the, the Lord told that to the apostles when they were asking him when he was coming back. But Buckman was so sure. Oh, no, we can find a date. And he spent all the time. Well, you know, seven years from this, and it's going to be a year 2000. And it can't be any later than this date, and this date can't be this. And what are the students? They follow right along with it. Well, if this is correct, now it's correct. And, you know, I'm going to find this. And Paul, he goes to Revelation. He goes, you know, and, uh, you know Buckman went to, what? Oh, Buckman, Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. So Buckman would go. Song of Solomon. Yeah. And this represents this, and this is this, and this really represents this, you know. I see it, I see it. They're nuts. 
They're not mind of it. They've gone off the edge. And you as Christians are not going to be in peace as long as you follow nothing. nut. You have to make the evaluations. And when a guy starts telling you that not nonsense, it's time to say goodbye. They get so involved in this stuff, you know, about, 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 you know, about, 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 you go, they get off involved in all this witchcraft, this is why I put some of this witchcraft, mind control stuff, you know, and the Jesuits were coming, you got involved, the Jesuits, everyone's a Jesuit. The Masons, the Masons are coming, the Masons this and the Masons that. People, there's so many conspiracies out there, you can't keep up with them. <laughs> Everybody's in a conspiracy. That will, that will destroy your happiness in you know, being a sound mind. But you have to make a decision when you've come across these people to separate. You can't say, you can't, when the guy is just mentally off balance, doesn't have a sound mind, and refuses to accept the reality that the line, you know, the, the, the lies they're putting out, they don't believe the truth. You've got to separate from them. Move on. The Christmas of a sound mind, they'll drag you down to their level. They will drag you down to their level. These guys don't have sound minds. Brian Deng is always talking about his depression. Now sometimes depression can be a, a biological issue. But other times it's, it's a spiritual issue. And so you have to say, well, you know, these guys are going off the whales here. And so you have to be very careful. And you make an evaluation based on what Philippians is telling you. Second Timothy is telling you about having a sound mind. And those are the characteristics in Philippians about having a sound mind. Moderation, let your moderation be known to all men. These people are not moderate. The doctrines I put out are moderate doctrines. They're in the confines of basic Baptist fundamentalist dispensational teaching. You will find what I teach is nothing off the wall, nothing top of my head, nothing that I just saw in private interpretation. That's why these guys attack me again. God's never shown you anything. He showed me the right people to follow. Who correctly interpret the scriptures. These guys want itching ears. And so they're going to bring up something new to you that sounds very profound. And suck you into the heresies. And what they do teach you is true, isn't new. What they teach you as true is in the confines of that system of sound, scriptural, moderate truth. It's when they go off the wall. Then they, they've established that and say, see that? And now I'm going to tell you something here that God showed me. You know, the, uh, the, the, the Bethlehem star, you know, and that was the same star that appeared over Abraham. You know, now we can date the, uh, the second coming because of the stars. And they, What are you talking about? And 144,000, you know, they, were, they could have been 12,000. It's my opinion now. It could have been 12,000 from each tribe of the hell that, uh, you know, the hell would kill. What are you talking about? That's weirdo teaching. Oh, there are no Christian women in heaven. Because every every person who gets saved is going to have the exact replica body of Jesus Christ. A 33 and a 38, 33 year old male. What are you talking about? The guy teaches that, you just can't you just gotta cut him loose. 
And yet people just overlook that. Said, no, it's not. They just they've got they've lost their mind. Oh well, yeah, you can cut that. You know, when Jesus Christ comes back, and there'll be people cutting off their hands, <laughs> cutting off their foreheads. Let me get that forehead off. So this is how you evaluate this. You got to you have to evaluate your teachers. You have to evaluate who you're fellowshiping with. And you go with the wrong people. You go to wrong. You have fellowship with the wrong people. You have you follow wrong teachers. They will destroy your peace. They will destroy your sound mind because they don't have a sound mind. That's why you have to be a bearer and search the scriptures to see if these things be so. You have to search the scriptures and see where they are in error. And if they don't correct those errors, if they don't correct those errors, they're being shown instead of instead instead they attack you. They attack you instead and say you. They take it personal. Cut them loose. Cut them loose. So I'll stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.